All right, I am coming in live with you again this Tuesday morning to talk with you about protein supplements. And I know this is a very different subject from what we've talked about before with CKD, the low protein diet, all of those kinds of things. Uh, but I know a lot of you are also on dialysis or wanting to learn a little bit more about dialysis. So that's why I'm also providing this information for you guys. So you can really see the full picture of not only how different the CKD diets are, but just kind of understanding more about it. And for those of you that don't know me, well, first of all, my name is Jen. I am the renal dietitian founder of Plant Powered Kidneys. And I, uh, well, the reason I started getting into renal nutrition was because of dialysis. I worked in dialysis for a few years. Um, so that's that was a big foundation of me learning about the renal diet and then also learning why it would be so great to help more people with CKD prevent dialysis and be able to delay it, uh, keep their kidney function, do all those things earlier on rather than just coming to it at the end of dial or at the end of kidney failure on dialysis. Um, but dialysis is still really near and dear to me. It's something that I still want to educate people on so that people are aware more about the dialysis diet. So as we get started for this morning, we are going to be talking about protein supplements for dialysis. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why the protein is important. We're, it's definitely going to be kind of a 180 from what we've talked about before. And then I'm going to be providing some recommendations and ideas um, about the protein supplements that I've recommended for my dialysis patients before and what we want to look at when it comes to finding the right kind of protein supplement. So um, feel free to say hi and good morning. And I uh, would love to be connecting with you all still as we do when we do our lives. Um, and I will do my best to get to questions, take care of things like that. If you can't make all of this morning, I am going to be doing this talk a little bit more with James on Dadvice tonight. And I do have a really special announcement. If you haven't seen already, I'm also doing a bonus live on Instagram with a few renal dietitian colleagues. And we've done this a few times and we're working on doing it more consistently. Um, so we will be doing that tonight after Dadvice at 7.30 Eastern, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. So I'm gonna be going on live with you guys three times today. Uh, so I've got my uh, cup of coffee number two <laughs> to get me going. So um, before, good morning, beforeing. Good morning, <laughs> before we uh, get into it, let's see. Okay, so first of all, why is protein important for dialysis? There's a few reasons. Number one, the dialysis treatment, it filters the blood. It's cleaning the blood, removing toxins, removing wastes in this process. And while the technology has really come a long way, I mean, if you guys look into the history of dialysis, which is something I learned about when I was first getting into it, it's really quite fascinating. And of course, there's still... A bit of a ways to go. There's more talks about the artificial kidney coming out and things like that, which is really, really exciting. But yeah, if you look at some of the like very first dialysis processes and um, treatments, it's pretty interesting. So the work has really come a long way in creating a great dialysis modality to help people with end stage kidney failure. That's people with a GFR a glomerular filtration rate of under 15 or about 15%. Basically, there's not enough kidney function remaining, and the person is, number one, symptoms, not feeling good, has a low appetite, nausea, vomiting, extreme weight loss, all these kinds of things that are indicating that their body isn't able to maintain um, what it needs to do to stay healthy, to stay well. So dialysis is then recommended and initiated. And in this dialysis process, it's, like I said, removing the toxins, removing the waste, but part of that 
is sacrificed is some of the protein in the body. And one of the most common proteins that we know of in the blood is albumin. And you guys have heard me talk about albumin uh, in our renal function panel talk and probably many other places as well. But albumin is a protein in the body. It's made by the liver, uh, but it's in part removed through the dialysis process. So the theory is that we need to replace the protein. And there's some more information that we're learning about when it comes to this idea of dietary protein and albumin and other body proteins and how there's some overlap, but it's not like an equal this for that losing this means you're losing that kind of thing. So we are still learning more about it, but what we do know is because dialysis takes some of the body's protein, we do need to replenish some of that. So the person on dialysis will have a higher protein goal of anywhere from one to 1.4 grams of protein per kilogram of their body weight. And if you guys remember my talk of the low protein diet, we were looking at underneath 0.8 grams below the normal range of protein. So this is really flipping it on its head and we're looking at this totally other side of the spectrum. And this is one of the reasons in which the nutrition can get super confusing when somebody starts dialysis that they think, wait a minute, I wasn't supposed to be eating this Stuff. And now I'm supposed to be eating a tons more of it of different types of proteins. So that's one of the reasons the uh, diet can be really confusing on dialysis, because it really messes with your head to be thinking of things that you've been careful of for so long that you're now being encouraged to eat, which is protein in this case. So, hey, good morning, everybody. Um, so we're looking at this higher protein need in dialysis in part to help replenish or protect that albumin that's being lost in dialysis. Now, the goal for albumin on dialysis is to try to keep it above four. So if you look at your blood test results, if you're on dialysis and you have your lab report, which you should be getting, at least in the US, you should be getting once every month, your albumin, the goal ideally is at least four. Now, I did say that albumin and dietary protein aren't exactly parallel. They're not exactly the same. So it doesn't mean necessarily that just because you eat more protein, your albumin's automatically going to go up. There are other things that can cause an albumin to be in the lower range. And very, very often we see this in dialysis that a lot of people have a lower albumin because it there's so many other factors. So some of the reasons that a person can have an albumin underneath that goal of four could be being sick. And I'm talking about like just having a cold or having the, the flu or something, just not feeling well for a while, your albumin drops because it's working on helping you feel better. If you have a skin breakdown, if you have a wound, if you have some kind of infection that is really requiring more protein to go repair that, your albumin could be depleted. And the way I explain it is thinking of like, it's being dispatched. It's being dispatched into the body to go take care of things. So that number is dropping because it's being sent out. Um, sometimes it's a matter of not getting enough dialysis. And that is very, very common, especially as a person is transitioning new onto dialysis, that part of their treatment plan may be a lower amount of dialysis. And then it's going to slowly increase for the body to become acclimated, to get used to the dialysis process. And even in that transition, the albumin can be lower as the body is still kind of dealing with these, this, this waste buildup that's still slowly being removed. Um, even just the starting dialysis can be a trigger for inflammation. And inflammation is basically like the king of why albumin is low. The question is what's causing the inflammation. So it could be the start of dialysis. It could be not getting enough dialysis. If you are on PD, if you're just starting peritoneal dialysis, or if you're just starting, let's say emergency hemodialysis, where you have the, the CVC, you have the catheter in the neck, or if you're on PD, you have your catheter in your belly, that is uh, that required a little surgical procedure and that procedure can induce inflammation because right away the body's going to want to go repair and take care of that area uh, very, very often. I would have my patients with the CVC and their protein would be consistently low until they had their permanent access put in for dialysis. And that's, again, this is something that is a risk for infection. This is something that's going to have potentially a lower albumin, but really the, the ultimate concern is that high risk for infection because it's going directly into your heart. And that is not recommended for a long period of time. 
And that's why they get in your, your, your dialysis team will encourage you if you have a CBC to get that replaced with a fistula, a graft or your uh, peritoneal catheter, something else so that it's not being directly related to the heart. Um, and I'm sure a lot of this for you guys who are not on dialysis is pretty like, oh my gosh, like there's so much and there really is. But um, dialysis in the US does provide a dietitian in the clinic who will be seeing you at least once a month to do checkups and educate you on your dialysis diet. So a benefit of dialysis is that you get a healthcare team that is there who is trained to take care of you on dialysis and provide those personalized recommendations for all aspects of your health. So uh, that is a really, really good thing to have that team there who is educated and supportive for your health goals. So one of the reasons we're looking at more protein in the diet for dialysis is that albumin, that extra need for protein because of how the protein is being utilized from dialysis, how it's being pulled from dialysis. There is a, uh, there's another lab test that is usually in the dialysis lab report is called normalized protein catabolic rate. It's NPCR. And basically this is measuring the waste that they see from your blood test to estimate how much protein you're eating in, in your diet. And there's some, you know, anything that's estimated, there's some, um, <laughs> flexibility there when it comes to how accurate it is, but it does give an idea of how much protein you're eating. Now, as I mentioned, people on dialysis are going to be one to 1.4 grams per kilogram. And that's basically the number they're looking for with NPCR. They're looking to see if it's at least one, 1 1.2 for PD that takes out more protein in dialysis. It's 1.4. So it's kind of giving us an idea of how much protein is in the diet, how much protein is being metabolized in the body from those wastes. It's calculating, kind of reverse um, reverse engineering or reverse calculating what that protein is that you're taking in your body. So these are some reasons why protein is really important for people on dialysis. And again, big, big disclaimer here for you guys these protein supplements in general are not going to be recommended for somebody who has CKD and is not on dialysis. If that is you, if you're watching, hopefully you're watching just to learn more about CKD in general, learn more about dialysis to become really well informed. I'm a huge advocate for being informed about the full process and really understanding as much as you can about this. Um, but if you have CKD and you're not on dialysis, you should not be taking protein supplements. And we see this in the Plant Powered Kidneys Facebook group. We see questions in there, a lot of uh, things, a lot of topics related to protein. But for CKD, the low protein diet is going to be preserving kidney function. So you don't want to be taking any kind of protein supplements if you are not on dialysis. But for my dialysis warriors, this is for you particularly to learn about supplements that I have recommended to my past and current clients that are on dialysis. So uh, I'm going to run through this. I don't have as much time today. Uh, as I mentioned, I got a few lives for you guys. I have dad advice tonight and then an Instagram live with a few other dietitians. So we're going to be doing some stuff there as well for you. But uh, the there's different types of proteins that you can look at when we talk about protein supplements. So this is going to be kind of, again, a bigger picture about protein in general. So you have, for example, you have protein from animals, you have protein from plants. Uh, and those are like the two are big, the two biggest categories. And then we can kind of break them down into different sources from those categories. So from animals, you have whey protein. Whey is probably the most popular. And I'm guessing most of you, if not all of you have heard about whey protein powder, whey protein supplements. This is the type of protein that comes from milk. So it's an animal based protein, but it is a very strong or potent type of protein in which it is highly absorbed. There is a term, um, I always have to look it up because I have a hard time remembering it. Protein digestibility corrected amino acid score. P-D-C-A-A-S. And this is a way to compare these different types of proteins to see if like the value of them, really how, how absorbed are they after we take into consideration the cooking process, the, the processing of it, whatever it goes through. 
So some of the highest scoring protein foods in this category, we're looking at eggs and we're looking at cow's milk, which is the, the whey protein. So it's a very strong protein. Uh, it's a very it's a very strong protein. I guess I would, I would kind of just leave it at that. Now there's other types of proteins that come from plants. We know there's soy, there's pea, hemp, which is kind of soy. Um, what other brown rice is another one that's really popular. So there are plant proteins and they are really great still. Soy in fact is very comparable to other, like to beef. It's very comparable in that PDCAAS scoring basically it's equivalent in that range. So it's still a really great protein option. So if you want to do a still a more plant-based diet on dialysis, it is very possible. You just want to make sure that you're looking at those different protein sources to make sure that you're getting the highly digestible kind, which would include soy. In fact, many people on dialysis, if they're literally on the fence about it, I'm like, well, what about vegetarian? You could do eggs, you could do milk, or you could do the whey, you can do still soy, you can have all these different types of protein sources that are all really digestible and really beneficial. In fact, egg whites are basically pure protein, very minimal phosphorus. The phosphorus in eggs is found in the egg yolk. So if you're on dialysis and you're looking for a good low phosphorus protein, egg whites are fantastic for you. But again, soy is also a great option for you as well, because we know the the uh, phosphorus in plants is not absorbed nearly as much as some other sources that we find in the diet, especially here in America. So some of my general tips on when to or what to look for in general, when you're trying to decide on a protein supplement, usually I'm recommending that per serving, whatever protein you look at, whether it's a bar or a powder or something, it should have at least 15 grams of protein, like 12. I, I can be okay with for many of my clients. Um, there are a few bars like power crunch is a brand that I really love that I've encouraged other clients to have before. And it's usually about 12 to 15 grams of protein. Um, but it's a lighter protein. It's a lighter protein bar. So it's easier to eat without feeling so weighed down. Cause a lot of protein bars, if you tried them, they're really intense. They're really chewy, really heavy, um, very, very filling. So I like the power crunch bars because it was a much lighter option. So try to aim for 15 grams of protein. When you're looking at potassium, not every single bar powder, whatever, what have you, they won't always have potassium, but ideally you want to look for some that are, that's less than 250 milligrams potassium per serving. And this is just because it's more, it's mostly going to be like added potassium or it's going to be from parts of their ingredients. And I do want you to have potassium, even on dialysis, potassium is still something that's really important to have just in a different range compared to other people, um, not on dialysis. So being careful with potassium, be mindful about that. The sodium, some of these bars and powders can be really high in sodium. So 300 milligram is my, is my cap. That is my cap for sodium for a protein bar and ideally, or a protein powder. And ideally if it's up at that 300 milligram range, then the protein should be up there too, like 20 plus grams. You don't want to have a bar that is 10 grams, but is giving you 30 or sorry, 300 milligrams of sodium. Cause that ratio just kind of seems off. You're not getting as much protein, but you're getting the higher end of sodium. It's not really worth it. And then last, but absolutely not least, if anything, probably one of the most important things, make sure there's no phosphorus additives. Okay. Make sure that you don't see P H O S anywhere on the ingredient list. That is really, really important. Um, and, and a lot of the plant-based options will not have phosphorus additives, but I will say I have seen, uh, I have seen protein supplements that will be promoted as organic and non-GMO and yada, yada, and have phosphorus additives. So just because they give a lot of great marketing to tout all of these fantastic benefits that they like to say, doesn't mean that it's going to be without phosphorus additives and even potassium additives. I'm really hesitant about um, if they have potassium additives, make sure that they're listing the potassium content, which I believe they should be doing. Um, but you want to pay attention to that for sure. 
So that's a really quick rundown for me about like the general recommendations when we're looking at these uh, different types of protein supplements. And then when you're deciding between a bar or a powder, you can absolutely, you should be talking with your healthcare team about which one was best for you, but also taking some other considerations like your lifestyle. And then also something very, very important for people on dialysis is the fluid restriction. And the reason I say this is if you choose a protein powder, you're going to need to mix it into liquid, even a little bit of liquid, but that would still count as part of your fluid restriction. So if you're doing a protein powder, but you have to be really careful with your fluids or your team is telling you that you're bringing in too much fluids between your treatments, the protein bar may be a better option. But like I said, the protein bars can be pretty heavy uh, in, in their consistency. And if it makes you really thirsty, then that can also offset your fluids. So you might want to kind of play around with maybe some of the bars that are a little bit lower on the protein side, like the power crunch one that I, that I mentioned, um, that one, um, the zone perfect bars, the lighter bars that don't have as they're not as dense. So they might not make your mouth as dry, make you as thirsty. So, um, hopefully that helps. And yes, so Denise asked, can you share the supplements so I can write it down? Actually, I do um, I do have a blog article and let me share that. So all this information you can find at the website plantpoweredkidneys.com slash protein supplements for dialysis patients, or you can just click on the blog link at the top on my menu and right away you get the most recent article which is just put out today about this topic. And I have links to all different kinds of protein supplements there that um, that I recommend. And these are the kinds that I've personally used or that I've recommended to clients based off of these factors like phosphorus and potassium. And I do on that article, I do even have a um, table that shows a comparison. I break them down into, into the different types of protein. So I look at whey protein, I look at collagen protein, which is another type of animal protein. I look at the plant-based protein options, which are the pea, the hemp, and the brown rice. And I have bars and powders recommended on both sides. So we have tons of recommendations there. And of course, I've become a really big fan of tables. And if you guys uh, like the tables, if you like that information in the blog, I would really appreciate feedback from you guys. Um, if you can comment at the bottom of the blog, or even here, if you want to post in here to let me know what you think, I'm always open to feedback, um, good or bad, really honest feedback is always really, really helpful for me to make better content, better information for you guys to learn from. So the recent blog article that I have posted up from today um, has the different types of protein bars that I have personally recommended to my clients. Um, there's, there's quite a few, but there are some there are some things that you definitely want to pay attention to with these different types and really focus on what is most important to you, whether it's your potassium is your biggest concern, your phosphorus is your biggest concern, your protein is your biggest concern, whatever that factor is, really kind of hone in on that area. And then as I've mentioned, make sure you speak with your healthcare team before you start a a protein supplement because it's really great for dialysis, but it's definitely not advised for anybody not on dialysis with CKD. That is not going to help you preserve your kidney function. Uh, it's going to make it harder for your kidneys to be digesting and taking care of more protein. So finally, the other uh, quick thing I wanted to bring up today when we're talking about these protein supplements is kind of a two part, a two part topic. So there are ready to drink protein supplements. And most of these, like 99%, 99.7%, something way up there. Most of these are not going to be recommended because a ready to drink protein shake is almost guaranteed to have a preservative made from phosphorus and or potassium. And that's just because it is preserving, it is helping to keep that carton shelf stable. It's helping to keep it preserved. There are two ready to drink protein supplements that I have personally recommended and I have utilized in my clinics. So one of them is called Nepro 
And Nipro is a supplement and it's even on the label. It says specifically for uh, people on dialysis and it provides a lot of protein. It has all the nutrients listed out, including potassium and phosphorus. Um, but it is kind of a medical food. It's pricier. It's definitely on the pricier side. So you're really paying for this personalized, uh, this protein drink that is meant specifically for dialysis. Um, that being said, if you do need something that's grab and go, I think Nepro is a great option. They have vanilla mixed berry and butter pecan, which butter pecan was always my favorite. And then if you keep it in the freezer, it's almost like an ice cream kind of treat, like a, a, a shake. So that one is a good option. Another option is called Nova Source Renal. Now Nova Source Renal is a very comparable type of product from another company. Um, and they have vanilla. Oh man, there's, there's, to be honest, I haven't, um, I haven't used as much. Um, I know they have their vanilla. That's all I can think of right now for Nova Source, but it's still another good option. Both of these you could find on Amazon. You might even be able to find them at your local Walmart or in your pharmacy. You'll probably have to ask the pharmacist and it's not required that you have a prescription for these. Um, but again, they're, they're specifically for people on dialysis and they're not cheap. So I would definitely talk with your healthcare team first before starting this to make sure it makes sense for you. Cause I would hate for you to be, um, be buying something that may not even be beneficial for you. Now, another thing about the protein supplements on dialysis is many dialysis clinics. And again, for those of you that uh, don't know enough about my background, I've worked in several dialysis clinics. I worked both with DeVita and with Fresenius. And both of these companies have what's called an oral nutrition uh, supplement program, ONS supplement program or an ONS program. And what this is, is for people on dialysis with an albumin, their protein level under 3.5, 3.5 or underneath, they can qualify to get a protein shake or a protein bar, some kind of protein supplement during their dialysis treatment. Uh, and this is across the board offered to all of the patients on dialysis. Now it's the patient's decision on if they want to have that supplement or not. So it's always your choice, but you can only qualify it if you for if you have that qualifying albumin level. So you need to talk with your healthcare team about this. And it is covered. It's a covered cost by Medicare. Um, by the insurance companies and the dialysis companies to help those with a low albumin. But if you have a, an albumin improvement or if your albumin, let's say, hits that goal of four or if it comes up higher for a few months, you might become uh, removed from that ONS program because your albumin has improved. That being said, some research has shown that the albumin improvements or the protein improvements are short lived and they'll especially they'll drop off if somebody stops a protein supplement. So um, it's case by case basis. And there's, a, as I mentioned, there's a lot of factors related to your albumin level, related to inflammation, other reasons why your protein level would be lower. But it's kind of important to keep in mind if you are started on a protein supplement that you might need to maintain that regimen to see sustaining results, to see your protein level stay, remain at the goal or higher. So that's some, some of the things that I wanted to kind of cover. But as I mentioned, um, as I mentioned, let me pull it up again. This is the URL for the article, or you can go to just plantpoweredkidneys.com. And when you click on the blog, it will take you to all of our articles. We have a new article every week that comes out. And this one is all about protein supplements specifically for people on dialysis. So I hope that you all find this information helpful. I know not everybody here is on dialysis or planning on dialysis, but I do know that there are a bunch of you that are on dialysis that are looking for this information too. And as a renal dietitian who has helped people in every stage of CKD, even through dialysis and even through transplant, uh, I do want to work on addressing a lot of these different topics for a lot of different scenarios. So again, I really hope that this has help, been helpful for you guys. I will be talking more about this tonight on Dadvice TV Live. So that'll be Tuesday, the 27th of July. 
at 6 p.m. Eastern. And then I'll be doing a special Instagram live. If you guys uh, don't know, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at plant.power.kidneys. And we share daily tips and information there as well about uh, the renal diet. And we'll do lives and videos there too. So uh, I hope you all have had a great time tuning in today. And if you have any questions, please take a look at the article and drop your questions in the bottom. I always go through the questions there, review and reply myself personally, and look to give you guys more information. So have a wonderful rest of your day. And I hope I see you all um, <laughs> in a few hours later tonight. All right, take care.